webinar today. Um, today, we focus our training on one of our uh, databases, Pivot. Uh, and the session is um, focused on um, uh, how you can use it to search for funding, opportunities for your research, education, equipment, and or other projects uh, as you seek grant support from external funding sources. Uh, my name is John Sapogas. I'm Director of Award Pre-Proposal Support, uh, otherwise known as APPS. Um, uh, I'd... The Research Foundation of City Uni New, uh, University of New York provides these databases to you through its vendor, Pivot. Anyone at CUNY, uh, administrators, faculty members, students with a cuny.edu address has access to this database. Um, before we begin with the main presentation, what I'd like to do is, is I'd like to let you know about the apps office services uh, that we offer you, um, CUNY faculty and students, anyone who's really seeking support uh, for, um, uh, from external um, sources. Uh, we're here to help guide you through the labyrinth of the research funding landscape. Uh, you can contact us and, and we'll offer to meet with you and provide you with guidance regardless of where you are uh, in your research development efforts. Uh, if you're fairly advanced in your research development and you are ready to submit a proposal for funding, we can offer you a service to have it peer reviewed by experts in your area of research. This pre-submission peer review provides you with knowledge on the strengths and weaknesses of your proposal before submitting it to the external sponsors competition. Uh, Feel free um, uh, to contact us at uh, apps at rfcuny.org uh, uh, if you want to set up a meeting uh, to discuss uh, these services. Uh, finally, we have a small travel grant research development uh, program where we provide funding to CUNY researchers who are interested um, in visiting um, external sponsor program officials. Uh, COVID-19 has pr pretty much put that program on hold. Uh, we expect to resume that um, once the pandemic has ended. Um, we're thrilled to see uh, that uh, this webinar is being attended by such a large number of people. In the interest of making sure that we cover all the topics, I'm urging you to either submit your questions to the chat box or wait until the end of Robert's presentation where there will be a Q&A. The webinar is being recorded and will be posted on, your webs on, on our website, the RF CUNY website. Um, so if you want to be anonymous, please use the chat box to ask your question. If you ask your question on the live webinar, you are consenting to be recorded on the Zoom and the video will be posted uh, on our website. So um, without further ado, um, I'd like to now introduce Robert Laurie, uh, Customer Success Manager at Pivot, uh, who will provide you with all the training today, uh, how to access Pivot, uh, will inform you on all the bells and whistles that P Pivot provides. Um, so thank you, Robert, for joining us today and agreeing to conduct this webinar. Well, thank you, John, for the introduction and uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, a quick note, uh, John, if you can just confirm before you unmute that you can, that everybody, that you can see my screen, there should be a PowerPoint slide up there. Uh, yes, I can see yeah, your okay. screen. All right, great stuff. Thank you. Um, so um, thanks everyone for again for your time today. Uh, I, it's always a privilege and an honor to uh, to make uh, to be able to speak to such a distinguished group. Uh, thanks for all the good work that you do in higher education, in research, and so on. I know that uh, what, the work that you do benefits uh, society across the world. So thanks for that. So as John mentioned, I'm uh, Robert Laurie. I'm customer success manager for Pivot RP, uh, which we'll just call Pivot as we go through uh, through today's demo. Uh, I, I work for a company named Ex Libris, which in turn is owned by another company that might be more familiar to you uh, named ProQuest, which in the last three weeks has now be, been, been uh, acquired by a, another company you might be familiar with named Clarivate. Uh, they uh, have any number of things uh, that they do. One of them is that they run Web of Science, which may be a familiar uh, term or product for you. <clears throat> so. Um, we are going to take a look today at the Pivot database that is essentially, at its core, it is a, uh, a source, a resource for you to find 
funding opportunities for research, for equipment, for travel, for all sorts of different types of grants. Uh, the database uh, has also been expanded in, 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 in recent times to include <clears throat> scholarly profiles, opportunities for you to claim your profile, to update your profile within Pivot uh, that allows you to be discovered as a potential collaborator by others, both within the CUNY environment, but outside of CUNY. Uh, we'll show you a little bit about that. Uh, we've also added a previously awarded grants database, which might help to be in, uh, might inform you as you are thinking about applying for a specific grant. You can basically see where the money went in years gone by. And also a separate database within Pivot, which we'll take a look at, uh, um, where it, it's an opportunity for you to uh, speak at conferences and uh, uh, gives you an idea of calls for papers and things like that. So we're going to start with uh, a, um, a little, a uh, couple of slides. Uh, I've got my first slide up there. Uh, I mentioned three different companies, Exlubris, ProQuest, Clarivate. The, the URL is constant, pivot.proquest.com is your starting point. So access the database, this online tool that we're going to take a, a, a live demo look at today. Go to pivot.proquest.com, sign up there using your institutional email address. As John mentioned, it's available to everybody that's got a cuny.edu email address. Use your particular school or college's uh, email address. Don't please use a Gmail address or a private email address. That will be rejected at the sign-on process. So you must use your institutional email address. We'll, we'll show you a little bit about that as we go through uh, our, our little demo today. Uh, we're just gonna skip through a couple of slides. As I mentioned, what is Pivot RP? 23,000 active and constantly updated funding opportunities. These numbers, by the way, uh, tend to go out of date as soon as we post them. Uh, so, um, you know, Pivot is a live funding opportunity or a, a, an op a database of live funding, open uh, funding opportunities. Um, we work with close to 14,000 uh, funders from across the world. So it is a global database. I will show you uh, uh, as we do the demo today how you can quickly apply facets and filters to your search for funding opportunities to, to get rid of some of that global clutter, if you like. Uh, so, uh, if you have no particular interest on in funding opportunities for those that are based in Switzerland, for example, then you can easily apply a particular facet or filter uh, to drill down and find and hone in on uh, funding ops that are relevant to you. Um, and we also include, uh, there's a, a 3.4, 3.5 million uh, re professional researcher profile. So within Pivot, in addition to finding funding opportunities, you can discover and find uh, potential collaborators, uh, other uh, researchers who are like-minded or who are interested in the same topics as you and so on. So um, again, we'll just skip through this very quickly, but we have this wide distribution of sponsors and funding types, 14,000 or so different sponsors and funding types from large uh, U.S. Department, of, uh, all the U.S. departments uh, and so on, all the way down to the smallest nonprofits, the smallest private foundations and so on. You will find them in Pivot. Again, you can apply readily facets and filters to drill down to find exactly what you're looking for today. Uh, there's just a, a graph as to where the money is coming from uh, within Pivot. Um, and a wide variety that results then in a wide uh, a variety of different types of opportunities. You'll see there that we have uh, editorial opportunities, ed opportunities for publishing, uh, for facility construction, artistic pursuits, dissertations, all the way down to pure uh, research uh, funding opportunities, the big, the big bar at the bottom. So, um, you know, there really is, um, is a wide variety of funding opportunities that you can discover and pivot. This is the company or some of the company that you keep. These are uh, organizations or institutions within uh, uh, North America, uh, some of the better known ones that are currently active users of Pivot RP. Their researchers are using the tool also to discover funding opportunities, to discover potential collaborators, and so on. And then uh, globally, there are some more well-known names. This is some of the names from across the world that use the same tool that we're going to take a look at in just a couple of minutes. So you are in good company, uh, and um, you know we hope to with continue expanding uh, uh, universe of folks that are using Pivot. So hopefully, again, I, I've skipped. I've got rid of our PowerPoint. Yay! Now we're going to take a look, a live look at the Pivot database, the online tool, and help you uh, navigate your way through that. And we'll touch on some key points today. And we have to go fairly quickly today. There's a lot to cover, but there'll be uh, many opportunities, uh, as John mentioned at the end, to, to uh, take some Q&A um, and uh, also opportunities afterwards. I'll point you at some self-help 
opportunities, knowledge centers, and videos that you can learn, do a little bit of learning by yourself. So first things first, pivot.proquest.com. That's your starting point. Take, use your browser, go to pivot.proquest.com. And if you don't have an account already with Pivot, it's a fairly easy sign up process. You fill in a form that identifies who you are. You tell us who you're affiliated with, what institution you're affiliated with. You hit the submit button, you get a confirmation email, you hit choose a password, and then you log into pivot.proquest.com. And this is your landing page, the home page. I have to mention that at some of the CUNY institutions, this will look a bit different. Your Pivot administrators at your local college or school have, or some of them have taken the opportunity of uh, branding this homepage uh, to get rid of in the top blue line along the top left, you'll see X Libris and then Pivot RP. That may, may or may not appear to you. It may have been replaced by your school's logo and your school colors. Uh, the tips and resources section in the bottom right hand corner. This whole section may have been modified to include institutional specific messaging from your research administrators at your local college. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. The functionality does not change. The look may change, but the functionality does not change. So we're going to take uh, a, a quick tour through um, uh, what, you're, what, what you might first experience when you log into Pivot. You logged in, you've got a username and ID, you know how to get to Pivot, and you land on the home page. One of the first things that we're going to advocate and, and, and suggest strongly that you do is you do something that we call claim your profile. We should. We have a team that loads profiles in the background. We scrape publicly available websites and other assets that ProQuest has access to. And we try and, and load a profile, a researcher profile for every faculty member at, across the, the, the CUNY universe. So the first thing you want to do when you first log in, if this is your first time at Pivot, uh, in Pivot, is to go find your profile. And there's various ways that you can find that. You can click on this, this My Profile section in the middle bottom part of that home page. You can click on your username in top right and say claim your profile and so on. Or you can go to the profiles tab uh, towards the top left. If you click on profiles there, it's going to open the profiles tab. Then you can click onto your profile. I am logged into a demo account, just a, big, a, a very basic account that I have, not as a pivot administrator, and I have not yet claimed my profile. I'm not a researcher, but uh, if you imagine that when you land here, uh, and you haven't yet claimed your profile, this is the screen that you're gonna be presented with. We would ask you to claim your profile. Just follow the prompts here, claim your profile, click that, that, uh, that, that link. It'll take you to this page. The outside institutions button or, or checkbox may or may not be checked here. If it's not, go ahead and check it if you can't find yourself. But the idea here is that you should be able to find yourself Again, my name is Robert Laurie. There are four others who have a similar name or the same name within the Pivot global universe. So Pivot is offering suggestions and saying, is this you, basically, and depending on your name and the commonality of it and, uh, and so on, uh, you hopefully will find yourself. And once you find yourself here in this list, in this case of four results, we're basically asking you to click the button that says, this is me alongside the appropriate profile that, 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 uh, that, that's been presented to you. If you cannot find yourself here in this list of profiles, then you have other options. You can either um, <clears throat> create your own profile. You can start from scratch and build it. But we don't have time today to follow that uh, trail, if you like, but it, it's fairly intuitive. Uh, we, have, we prompt you along the way. Uh, and as we, we find out more about you, as you tell us more about yourself, Pivot will try and auto-complete some of the publications, some of the previous awards that now that we know who you are, uh, that have been uh, that 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 will help you complete your profile. If you're if you've previously worked at a different institution and used Pivot there and claimed your Pivot uh, your profile at that previous institution, then you might want to use this third option down here if your profile is already claimed. If you were at Columbia, for example, and now you're at CUNY then you might want to use the contact us. It's, a, it's a, a link directly into an email, directly into our profiles team. They will help you one-to-one uh, -to, -one to figure out where your profile was previously claimed and shift it over into your current profile environment. Two things that benefit you once you've claimed uh, uh, that, 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 that well, here's why we, we want you to claim your profile. We suggest strongly that you claim your profile. Number one, it allows you to be discovered as a potential collaborator by others, both within CUNY and outside of CUNY at all the different uh, institutions uh, that are using Pivot throughout the world as a potential collaborator. Number two, when you claim your profile, by default, you will then start to receive 
we, what we call either weekly funding alerts or advisor alerts. And these are simply, simply emails that come to you with um, opportunities that our content team has added in the past week that we think or that the pivot algorithm thinks match your profile. So it is essentially a suggestion system that takes a look at what was loaded, what funding ops were loaded in the past week by our content team and which of any of these might um, match your profile and therefore you might be interested in. So you would then get a weekly funding alert email or a couple of them uh, with suggestions from Pivot as to new opportunities that have been added to the database that we think match your profile. I'll show you very quickly an example of that. Uh, there it is right there. There's my funding opportunities uh, email from this past week. It tends to run on a Saturday or a Sunday, so I get these Monday morning. And there's it's what it's presenting to me. I am not a researcher, but I've input some keywords into my profile here just to give you a sense uh, so that I can display this. You get an email that looks like this uh, with some, some uh, new funding ops that were added in the past week that we think match your interests, match your subject area. It gives you um, a little, uh, you know, two or three line summary of the of the opportunity that was added that we think matches your profile. You can simply click the 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 name of the opportunity or the C record uh, to zoom back into Pivot to see the entire uh, details of the opportunity. So. It's one step, if you like, once you've logged in and claimed your profile, I'm not suggesting that at that point you can then just sit back and relax and put your feet up and let Pivot do its work. Pivot will do its work for you. It will bring to you suggestions uh, of, of new opportunities as they are loaded into the Pivot database. Um, but we would, we would ask that you, you consider taking further steps and, vis and, and, and visiting the Pivot uh, database on a, on a more regular basis. Uh, to do your own searching for funding opportunities and that's what we're going to focus on in the vast majority of the presentation today but before we get to that point let me go back to the home page this is your landing page at all and we'll we'll talk about the tabs along the top here we'll ignore the news tab for today it's just a link to an online uh, digital magazine about research across the world uh, which your your administrators that you reach at each school can turn off or on but let's take a look at a couple of the extra databases in Pivot first, and then we will home back, uh, come back and look at the funding tab. If we click into awarded grants, this is a, a burgeoning work in progress database, if you like. And what we're trying to do here is show you from all the funders that are listed here, uh, where the money went basically in the past. So uh, for example, if I click into the National Endowment for the Humanities, NEH here, it shows me then very quickly, it shows me all the previously awarded grants from NEH by year uh, and by other uh, filters in here also. And the idea here is that as you click through this, if you click into 2022, there have been some awards already. You can see the, the, the funding opportunity, you can click into that. We'll just take the first one. I don't know anything about this one here, but basically it tells you where the, who the, the, the principal investigator was for this particular award. It's an informative database. It doesn't help you find new funding opportunities, but it might inform you if you're considering applying for a specific opportunities. It might be help, helpful for you to know where the money went in the past uh, and so on. So that's the awarded grants database. The one alongside it is called conferences. This tab is just as it says right there. Uh, it brings to you opportunities for you to present at conferences. Perhaps they're going to be real, live, physical conferences this year. Who knows? Uh, but they may be virtual and also a call for uh, calls for papers. And again, um, you can browse through by subject here. If you click into knowledge management, for example, I'm just choosing things at random. You can look at the 319 results. You can then click into each one or ones that seem interesting to you. You can apply filters here on the left-hand side. Uh, but again, this conferences and uh, calls for papers database is there. It's a separate database from the funding opportunities database. Uh, the award of grants is where the money went in the past that might inform you on your current thoughts about applying for new funding opportunities for yourself. The profiles database or profiles tab, excuse me, we've taken a very quick look at. We looked at your profile. Again, I'm in a demo account. When you click the profiles tab at your institution, it will be much more uh, populated, the screen will be much more populated than this demo account is. You can browse through your peers' profiles at your own institution. You can also discover uh, uh, peer profiles or researcher profiles at all the institutions that are using Pivot throughout Pivot. Okay, so back to the home page. 
uh, our focus today is largely going to be on finding funding opportunities. But before I go any further, uh, I'm going to uh, hit the chat and see um, if there's anything that we should address. Um, okay, so I'm going to go in back in, in, in no sort of order here. So one, one comment or question that we have is I already get the weekly email with funding alerts, but I need to modify my profile to get better suited funding alerts. In the Q&A, can you discuss how you can update one's own profile and how to access when you have trouble accessing? Yes, yeah. So accessing your profile is uh, editing your profile. It's fairly straightforward. I will need to log into a different demo account in order uh, to um, um, to show you that. But if you can remind me towards the end of the of the demo today. Uh, I can quickly log out and log in as a different uh, user in, in the demo account. Yes, you can edit your profile. Uh, the way to do it would be very quickly. Let's let's maybe tackle this right now. Go to, and Mike, well, I can't do it here because I, this demo account, I haven't claimed a profile. I will address this uh, before we get done uh, uh, done today. So gently remind me later on before if I, if I forget to do that. So you can edit your profile. Uh, with whom, another question is with whom does Pivot share information on its profile holders? Only with other Pivot users. Um, I hopefully that, that answers the question. We don't willy nilly. Yes, you can add it your middle name initial. You can change all sorts of stuff. What if you are there twice? Then you would use the, um, if I quickly go to the your profile section, contact, use the, um, uh, use this email address, use the contact us. If you have a conflict, um, then uh, use the contact us for assistance. It, is an e it fires off an email uh, that you can uh, then send to our, our, our profiles team. Uh, where is the data being pulled from? The data is being pulled from publicly available. Uh, we basically scrape your faculty listing on your web pages. Um, and uh, we update the profile data every year for each institution. Um, I think maybe that's it. So somebody remind me later on to log out and log back into somebody different so I can show you how and where to edit your profile. Okay, all right. So we'll address these questions as we go. Let's go to the main focus today on funding. Um, so I clicked on the funding tab. It is possible to start your funding opportunity search from the homepage, which we're at right now. You can start, you can type anything you want in here, food and security, for example, is stored in my browser cache. If I click into that, it will then go and do a search for uh, food and security. It gives me a lot of results here. That's when you're gonna start applying some of the filters on the left-hand side. We do strongly advise that if you're gonna do a funding opportunity search today, uh, use uh, take the time to click into the funding tab uh, where you have more options, but more particularly the code that underlies this page is much stronger uh, and more geared up for particular funding searches. So there's different ways that you can start your funding search. Um, and there's no right or wrong way to do it. Uh, they all end up in the same place, so to speak. But one of the ways you can start your funding search is to use the, the wheel here. You'll see this, I hover over it and move my mouse around. It is an interactive wheel based on keywords. Uh, um, Pivot has its own controlled vocabulary of many thousands of Pivot keywords and phrases. Each opportunity before it's uploaded into the database is allocated at least one, in some cases many, Pivot keywords or phrases to help drive consistency of search, uh, but also to enable things like this. So you can start your search for funding today by using the interactive wheel as you browse around. If you go from center to external, or the outside uh, concentric circles, you start to drill down. I'm in now in energy science. If I move out a little bit, now I'm in renewable energy. If I click that, if I click my mouse there, it's gonna go, go and do a funding search for me on renewable, uh, renewable energy uh, and so on. So that's one way uh, in, in which uh, you can start your funding search. Perhaps not the most elegant uh, way, it might be glitzy and so on, it's a nice, thing, but more likely you want to use the bar along the top. And here you have different options. The search of all fields tab, which is where we are right now, is pretty much like a Google search. You can input any term, any phrase, any combination of words that you want. You can use Boolean operators in here. If you want to look more in the detail about uh, the types of, of uh, complicated searching that you can do in Pivot, take a second to click into the search tips document 
but it's located right under the search bar here. It's a very good document on mouse proximity searches, Boolean searches, and so on, and the way it will give you a sense of how the pivot searching capabilities are established. So you can just simply start typing here. I'm going to use uh, one that I've used before and type and, and imagine I type the word homelessness and it will bring back 52 results. We will look at applying the filters and what you can do with good results that you discover in a second. Now, right now we're just covering the different ways to start your funding search. You can search by funder. There's a new a separate tab, a second tab there. Search by found funder. You can look at all funders, A to Z. Uh, these are a listing by alphabet of the 13 or 14,000 different funders that we work with throughout the year. If they are, if it's an active URL here, then we know that there is an active opportunity from that particular sponsor in the Pivot database today. If it's not active, it just means that there is no active funding up from that sponsor today. Perhaps the deadline was yesterday, and so it disappeared off the off the database. So you can use search by uh, search all fields, search by funder or search by keyword. And this, this brings us back to the controlled vocabulary part of Pivot. Every opportunity gets allocated some specific keywords. Uh, that's what helps drive the weekly funding alerts, going back to the claim your profile idea. Uh, funding alerts um, uh, are, are driven largely off what's in your profile, but also on the keywords that are applied into, uh, to each funding opportunity before it's loaded. You can, again, we're in the search by keyword, if you start typing here, if I start typing the word robotics, uh, Pivot will start to autocomplete. And now you get your first glance or your first glimpse of what the Pivot uh, controlled vocabulary is like. There's a little bit of the hierarchy, a little bit of the controlled vocabulary tree, the keyword tree, if you like. Uh, optionally, another way to see and get familiar with the controlled vocabulary in Pivot is to hit, we need to be in search by keyword is to hit the, the drop down arrow along the right hand side of the bar. And now you can start to scroll through. Let's take arts and humanities just in, as an example. Each butterfly button indicates that there is something more. There's another tree or branch to that. This, And now you're starting to get a sense of what the pivot keywords are. And as you use pivot uh, uh, and you become more familiar with pivot, you then will start to get a better sense of what the pivot keywords are that apply to your particular area of study or expertise or, or research. Uh, if we click into energy sciences again, we get to see a sense of uh, some of the, the pivot keywords that, that can be applied here. If you select one energy testing or analysis, it drops it down here. You can select multiples, drop them down here and then do a search I'm not sure if this is going to bring us back in the results. We've got one result. A point I'll make, regardless of how you start your search, whether it's by keywords or simply a Google search or using the funding wheel or search by funder, this is a typical page that you will be uh, presented with. Um, always, though, along the top, regardless of how you started your search, you'll see here that we provide the breadcrumbs. So if you get to uh, do a, if you do a, a fairly involved or convoluted search, and apply all sorts of filters to it and so on. Uh, sometimes you lose sight of how, how did I get where I am? Uh, there's the breadcrumbs that tell you, you this is how you got to this one result in this case. But one result is not good for illustrative purposes. So let me do a separate search uh, today. Let's take um, genomics today just for fun. And hopefully that will give us, uh, yeah, 190 results. So we, let's imagine that I'm a real researcher, which obviously I'm not, but I've used my due diligence. I know what I'm looking for, and I've started my, my search for funding. And I've landed on here. I've, I've got now 190 results. Well, there's probably too many. There's probably some filters and facets that you can apply to this. Uh, Pivot uh, um, offers you on the left-hand side dynamic filters that are specific to the search results that are on the right hand side of the page here so you can't we've got 190 results for example we could immediately apply a filter to say that today i'm only interested in of these 190 i only want to take a look at the 55 if you follow my mouse under funder types in the left hand side i'm only interested today in the 55 from the u.s federal government i click into that it immediately applied that filter now i'm only looking at u.s government uh, funding types for uh, and the keyword genomics, if you like. So now we're at 55. That's a little bit more manageable, but wait a minute. Really, I'm only interested in um, more than that. I want to look at genetics within genomics. So I'm going to click on this keyword here. 
genetics, and now I've got six or seven, or seven in this case, seven results. Uh, now I've got a more manageable group of funding opportunities. I can then click into each one of these individually to get to the funding details page. <clears throat> and this is a typical funding details page. All I've done is click into the opportunity. It provides the information to you that has been provided to us by the sponsor, uh, uh, in this case, the National Institute on, on Aging. Uh, it gives you various links to the, their websites, to their funding websites. Uh, it, it provides information about uh, where the, um, in this case, we have information about where this grant went, where the money went in the past. Uh, we, it talks about applicant types. It talk, talks about locations and so on. There's obviously an abstract. You can blow that up to read a little bit more. And down here, I'll point out that under uh, alongside the keywords section, these are the keywords that our content team has applied to this specific opportunity. Um, when you find an opportunity that, that you agree or you know is, is typical of one that you would be looking for or, or are interested in, you can take, the, take note of the keywords that, are, that have been applied to the opportunity. And as we circle back later and look at editing your profile, you can add these specific keywords to your profile and that should help strengthen the matching process for the weekly funding alerts, make your weekly funding alerts more relevant uh, and pertinent to you and so on. So this is a typical detail uh, or detail page for a funding opportunity. You'll see that we have options alongside on the right hand side for tracking and sharing. Uh, you can add tags to these opportunities. If you're interested in this one, add a tag, make it part of a group uh, that you assemble of various opportunities that you give the same tag to and so on. You can click to see more ops like this that will fire off a new search based on what's in this information, what's in this uh, opportunity, all the information here. And another word about potential collaborators. So in my demo account, uh, it, it, based on the information in this, funding opportunity and in the the profiles of other people that are using the same demo account that I'm using, maybe it's telling me that there are two people potentially that might be interested in this opportunity within my organization. And also you can, here's where you can find others outside of CUNY that might be potential collaborators. So click on the from outside institutions. But let's go back to the page that we, that we the, the search results that we've landed on. So what can you do from here? Various things that you can do. You can click on the little checkbox alongside the seven results, the total results uh, row. And what that does, or you can click on individual opportunities within uh, along the page one or more. I'm clicking the first and the third just for fun. And you'll see that as we do that, you get options, track, share, and export. So when you click on, um, one of these or all of them, uh, these little buttons start to appear. And here's uh, specific actions that you can take with the opportunities that you've marked. And then reverse order. What you can do is you can export the opportunities that you've marked. If you click the export button, you may then choose to take the information on this opportunity or whichever ones you've marked and export it, them out in a different format. And, um, and I'll leave that up to you to determine when and how you might want to use this functionality. Typically, people might want to export out to an Excel format. It's actually CSV format. And you can also choose what fields you want to include in that export function. You might include all of them, the full record, or the specific ones. And basically, what I'll, I'm, I'm going to cancel that. But basically, you would end up with a CSV file that you could then manipulate and filter and sort on your own and use perhaps to take to a meeting or use for whatever purposes you want. There is a limit on the number of opportunities you can export in a given day, but it is in the many thousands. So don't worry about it. I don't doubt you'll ever hit that, that limit. So one of the options that you have is you can check, mark your opportunities that you're interested in here, export them out into a different and use in a different application, if you like. Another option that you have is you can share these opportunities that you've marked. Hit the share button, it is basically uh, you're going to send an email to people that you want to share these opportunities with. Uh, you type in e a name or an email address. If the type in, if the name is a, a person, uh, the, if it's the name of a person at the same institution as you, it will auto complete. You can also just copy paste uh, email addresses into here. You can add a message. Uh, it's basically, you know, hey, look what I found. Let's talk about this at our next meeting, or whatever you want to say. 
And basically, they would then get an email saying that you have found funding opportunities that you think they would be interested in. Uh, it's just a, a very uh, straightforward function, the native built-in sharing function within Pivot. If you find yourself doing this, sharing opportunities with the same group of people repeatedly, then you might want to consider uh, going back to your homepage and building yourself a little group. There's a section on the homepage that says groups. You can build yourself a private distribution group. It's basically the equivalent of a distribution list in email. And then you just send it to a group by selecting group rather than have to specify a number of different email addresses. So fairly straightforward. You can export, you can share. One of the things you can also do is track these opportunities. And that is a very specific uh, uh, pivot operation where you want to keep tabs on the opportunities that you're interested in, the ones that you've marked here. And basically by tracking them, you can give them a tag. You can say, you know, upcoming, you know, nine months away or whatever, or give it a, you know, whatever tag you want to apply to this. But when you track an opportunity, it, uh, or uh, multiple opportunities, uh, you, it then populates in your homepage, your tracked ops folder. And basically what you're telling Pivot is, keep an eye on this for me. So it may be an opportunity that's some ways away, maybe 10 months out, but you don't want to lose sight of it. It's a good way to store opportunities that you might want to revisit in the future. But also it's a good way to keep tabs on an opportunity uh, as, as um, if and when uh, information about that opportunity changes, you would then get a notification from Pivot that says something about your know, tracked opportunity has changed. So for example, you know, if, if the, uh, the, the, uh, the deadline goes from anticipated to confirmed, for example, you will get an email that tells you about that. You will also get emails on your tracked opportunities uh, when deadlines are starting to appear. And you can control when these deadlines uh, are, or when these emails will be generated by going to your preferences up and under your account. If you click into preferences, I don't think we have time to go there today. Um, you can then uh, specify when do you want to get reminders about your tracked opportunities, um, whether it be two weeks out from deadline or four months out from deadline or anything in between. These are options that you have. So for each or for any of the opportunities that you're interested in, in on this result set, you can export, share, and track them. One of the key things that you can do though, a very useful feature is to make this a saved search. So if you're looking at these seven opportunities here, seven results, and you look, you've looked at them and you've done your due diligence and applied the facets and filters to them to get down to the seven that you think are, these are the types of things that yes, I'm interested in. Uh, then one thing that you can do is make this a saved search. When you make a save search, you're not saving the results, you are saving the search criteria that got you to the results. When you make a save search, you get another pop-up, you give it a saved search name, I will call this Cooney Demo Saved Search, and uh, you just save it. And um, by default, the little checkbox says, would you like to receive a weekly email containing new or updated ops from this query? We strongly advise you keep that checked because when you make this a saved search, basically now, in addition to the weekly funding alerts that you're going to get once you've claimed your profile, by making this a saved search, you will now then get a separate email from Pivot every week if and when new opportunities are loaded into the Pivot database that match the search criteria that you used to get to this result set. So again, you're not saving the results, you're saving the saved search criteria. These then go into your home folder under saved searches. <clears throat> and I've done num numerous demos. So you'll see here that there are any uh, sort of, uh, uh, of numerous or, or any, any number of saved searches that I've made here. Uh, this is, I think today, the one that we made here. I'll, and this is in your saved searches folder. Um, and you'll see that it has two columns with numbers alongside. Um, this, the all results is when the initial search was run, that's today. It hasn't had a chance yet to update it on a weekly basis, but as weeks go by, you'll start to see new results for the CUNY demo saved search. Uh, the different numbers here, the seven, the seven slash zero, um, basically are indicate that the ones after the slash are limited submission opportunities, by the way, uh, just to give you a sense. But you can always revisit your saved searches 
Uh, you can click into the one that you with the one that we just made. Uh, we can see all, um, and then we're back to where we started. If you've made a safe search and you can make multiple safe searches um, to try and capture everything that you're interested in, if you want, if you start to see that things are not working out as you had hoped with a safe search, you can always click into it as I just did and modify the safe search by refining the search. And this applies to any search that you do. It takes you to the funding advanced search page. And this is where you can really apply your own criteria, your own filters to any search that you're engaged in. You can specify, for example, the amount. So you can say today that you're not interested in grants that are, uh, that you're only interested in grants that are more than a specific dollar value. Just enter the dollar value uh, in there and, and uh, let it do its thing. You can specify that for this search that you're working on, you only want to see limited submission opportunities, for example. You can specify um, wh where the applicant institution should be. This is where you can get rid of the clutter that I mentioned about Switzerland. I don't know if Switzerland is clutter, but here's where you can use geographic filters to get rid of funding from the global funding opportunities database that, you're not, that don't apply to you. You can specify funding types uh, that you are interested today in looking for uh, prizes or awards, for example, and or research oops and or uh, research pro oh, ah my mouth sorry uh, research project grants and innovation and so on you'll see they populate alongside here you can apply all these uh, these different filters that you are comfortable applying the top half of the page in the advanced search or in the refined search page are filters that you want to add into your search limiting filters if you like uh, the second half of the page is are the same filters but in this case, there are terms or filters that you want to exclude. So for example, given all the filters that you might apply along the top, you might also want to say for applicant type here that you don't want to be, you're not interested today in, in opportunities in this search that specify that they are only for undergraduate students, for example. If you apply an exclude filter, then it operates in a slightly different, different way. Um, so you use this, um, uh, using your own local knowledge, knowing what you're looking for and so on. It really didn't uh, make any, it did, it brought it down from seven to six. So just for illustrative purposes. Again, you have on the left-hand side, anytime you're in the middle of a search or you're modifying a safe search, uh, you have these built-in dynamic filters that you can apply, but always know that you can go to the refined search page and really start to use your own knowledge um, and good sense and, and, and knowledge of what you're looking for uh, and specify your own criteria in there. <clears throat> I need to pause just for a second and, and um, get a sip of water. There is a question uh, I'm looking at here and I think I can address this immediately. Uh, the question is, um, when reviewing search results, is it possible to delete or filter out inapplicable opportunities as we go so we don't end up reviewing them later on? You cannot um, say, uh, there's no real uh, button and pivot to say, um, get rid of this opportunity. The way to do it would be to figure out what it is about that opportunity that you don't want to uh, be included in your search and to apply perhaps, as we just looked at in the refined search page, to apply a filter to exclude whatever it is in that opportunity that um, that that makes you or, or that you know means it's one that you're not interested in. Hopefully, hopefully that's helpful. Um, various grant opportunities based not on field, but rather on intrinsic traits. If you're a woman or a member of some other group, often they are very generalized in terms of field. Um, L'Oreal Women in Science, does this beta database allow us to search that way? Let's take a look at the refined search page and see if we can figure out under applicant type what we have there. So we have various um, filters that you can apply to any search uh, using the applicant type filter. And you can see they're listed there, academic institution, commercial or private, government or public, LBTQ only, minority only, nonprofit, persons with disabilities, small business, women only. So these are, I think, an answer to your questions, yes. 
you can look for, if we click on women only, for example, here, then it would apply that filter to uh, uh, whatever search you're, you're in the middle of here and would look then and bring back results where the sponsor is saying this grant or this opportunity is available to women only or persons with disabilities only, if that's what you're interested in. So yes, I think you can use Pivot to, um, to, spec to look for these types of things. Um, let me see what other questions we have. Is there a way to add new keywords? There is no way for you to add new keywords. What you can do is tell us about keywords that you think uh, should be added. Um, obviously, uh, you know, things change. Uh, we, we, uh, two years ago, uh, we scrambled, of course, to add all sorts of multiple keywords uh, uh, surrounding the, the pandemic, COVID, coronavirus. If they hadn't already been there, we, we, we really uh, built up our pivot keyword, our, our, our control vocabulary at that point. Um, so yes, um, the way to do that would be to let us know about something through the idea exchange. And that's a good segue actually. Um, yeah, before I go to the segue I hope to make, can you only, another question is, can you only refine the search after a basic search or can you set up the search criteria ahead of time so refining isn't really necessary? It's a brilliant question. Let me go back to the funding tab. We're gonna start a new search. I looked at, we looked at searching all fields and search by funder and search by keyword. And we also looked at using the funding wheel. You can though, before you do any of these, you can jump immediately to the advanced search page, which gives you your starting point right here. Now you need to know what you're looking for, obviously, but here's where you, you, you get a chance to, from the get go, apply the filters and facets and the specific terms that you want to look for um, um, in, in, uh, as you do your search. The segue I wanted to make was the, a couple of things, and I'm keeping in mind I need to log out and log in back look back in to show you how to edit your profile. Before I do that, though, I wanted, uh, and it may be under the term of housekeeping, but I want to point you at specific and different resources that you as, as, as Pivot users have access to uh, within Pivot. Number one, the help button in the top right hand page is available to everybody. It's a direct, it, it, when you click into the help button, you get various options and we'll address these in turn. Um, you can click into our knowledge center, which is a documentation and video center where we have set up um, documentation and various videos that we think are helpful to you. So uh, to give it a, a, a chance to load, for example, this is what it looks like. You can browse through the documentation, um, knowledge articles, training, release notes. We, we, we do enhancements you know, periodically. Um, but you can also do a search here. So for example, if you wanted to find out more about profiles, just type in profiles and it will bring back a list of documents um, and documentation, general documentation that, that um, match that profile. So if you're interested in finding out more about profiles, you can click into these. Uh, they're basically PDFs. In some cases, they are videos. Uh, so if I go back a page, um, you can see here that we have a link to our YouTube channel. Um, the videos are undergoing scrutiny and refinements right now to make sure they're up to date. Uh, but the functionality behind each one is, is still there and hopefully it's going to come up very soon. There they are there. These are short videos um, getting started with Pivot. We've got them grouped a little bit. Uh, this first one is setting up your account. Uh, um, it, it talks in here about editing your account, which we're going to show you in just a second or updating your Pivot RP profile. That would be the video. They're very short. This one is three minutes, this one is seven, one of the longer ones. Um, here's what we've kind of tried very quickly to cover today, working with Pivot Funding Ops, how to do advanced searches in more detail, navigating the tracking, the sharing, the exporting of things like that, um, and um, making safe searches. Uh, and again, more information about Pivot, uh, about profiles and so on, and how to uh, creating new groups. I talked about creating a group so it's easier for you to share things that you find in Pivot. Uh, so use these uh, these these um, assets if you like other resources um, to uh, uh, you know maybe on a coffee break you can watch one of the videos or something like that if you wanted to do that these are all available from the help page or the help button which brings you to this page uh, you look at the knowledge center look at the videos the training center basically is the knowledge center but you can also contact or chat with our support team 
everybody has access to our support team. So if you think that Pivot is not working the way that you had expected or wanted it to, or if you're having trouble with anything in Pivot, use that button. Contact or chat with our support team. Um, give it a second to load. And uh, it, it's it's like any any tech support uh, system that you might be familiar with. It's a form you fill in, you tell us who you are, give us your email address, describe your problem, tell us you're not a robot, and off you go, goes into our ticketing system. The, the, the team that looks after Pivot and RefWorks is very, very responsive. They really know um, um, what, they're, what they're talking about, and they, they will get back to you very quickly. Uh, sometimes, and in this case we could, it's available here, you can chat with an agent, do a live chat with an agent back and forth, and that might help get you a speedier response if you wish. The other thing I wanted to point out, and this is to address the question about can we, can we add our own keywords? No, but what you can do is always, always tell us about things that you want to, um, that, um, that you think would help make Pivot better. You can do that through the bottom right-hand corner. Every Pivot screen has something called the Idea Exchange. And this is where you can click in here. You can look and see some of the other ideas that people have presented to us. Uh, and you get to vote. If you find one idea here that you're very much in favor of, you can vote for it. Um, and, uh, you know, as we used to say in Kentucky, vote, vote, vote early, vote often. But or if you can't find your own idea in here, go ahead and tell us about it. Your idea might be, please, we think that there might be a good idea to add these additional keywords and so on. And that reflects trends in research and in society, if you like. <clears throat> I'm rushing a little bit. I'm mindful of time. I wanted to, I'm going to log out very quickly and log back in under a different um, uh, username. Ex Libris, only because I want to show you um, how to um, uh, edit your profile. So I've logged in as somebody different. I'm still logged in as Robert Laurie, but it's, it's got different, uh, uh, different associations with it. So if I wanted to edit my profile, I have claimed my profile here. There's various ways I can access that. I can go underneath my username and click your profile, or I could jump in here in the bottom, in the middle, in the, in the bottom of the page and click my profile. I will, your profiles are going to be much more busier than this page is. I am not a researcher. Your profiles would include not just an overview, an overview tab, but a publications and awards, and perhaps even a patents tab here. Uh, but regardless, for illustrative purposes, when you find yourself and you go into the edit profile, you click the edit profile section. Just a, a, a brief note, Pivot's telling you we're going to take you to a new uh, browser uh, window or a new browser tab, uh, if you like. Uh, in order to edit profile. Here's where you can really punch up your profile um, by following the prompts. Again, if you wanna look at the overview, you can add your ORCID IDs, uh, all these things you can, you can free text your expertise in here. Uh, let me just close that, otherwise it wouldn't let me. So you can add pivot keywords. This is where I mentioned, if you remember, we looked at the details page on one of the funding ops and we saw the pivot keywords. If you, uh, when you find an opportunity that has these pivot keywords that you're interested in, take note of the pivot keywords in the opportunity and then go and edit your pivot keywords and add these in. That will help strengthen the weekly funding alerts that you get every week from the pivot, uh, from the pivot database and so on. You can add all sorts of things in here. Um, then you can add your publications. If we haven't captured all your publications, you can then start to add them and I'll tell you here that it, it, it may look daunting to have to add every single uh, present publication that you've done in the past, but Pivot, as you start to enter things, Pivot will do immediate lookups on various places and auto-complete much of this for you. So I hope that addressed the question about uh, how do you edit your profiles? Um, let me just see if I can find it uh, this way, see where it was. Keywords function, one new message. Pivot publications are not linked to Google Scholar. What you can do though, you can export from Google Scholar, I believe, and uh, I'm not an expert on Google Scholar. You can export from Google Scholar and then you can batch upload from a CV or from a file. It has to be in RIS or bib text format. Oh, excellent. That's a great response. Thank you. So yeah, start with Google Scholar, export it out in the, one of these formats that we just mentioned here, and then use this batch upload function and pivot to populate your profile and so on. Yeah. We're at uh, one minute to the hour. 
Are there any, I've tried to rush through the questions quickly. Are there any questions that someone wants to unmute and, uh, and, and ask um, to get us to the finish, finish line here? Robert, can I ask a question? Please, yes. Um, hi, uh, you already answered many of my questions. Um, I, I've been at CUNY for, for, a, for a long time and we used to have a kind of a database before Pivot and I think I was somehow automatically transferred to Pivot. Okay. So, uh, and that's why I was asking about adjusting my profile. So okay. we, have a, we don't really have a password or anything to log in, right? So if we have the profile, I should be able just to find it and edit it, is that correct? Well, there is, you, you're going to need to have a password to get into Pivot. Okay, and if so, if I if I don't have that, how do I how do I go about that? Then then you would go to and, and I'll try and show you here. Although it's a wee bit hard for me to undo things that I've done, but if I log yeah. out of here, let me sign out real quick. Follow follow the thing. Um, if I log out here, uh, I would. So I I just sign in here. My my you know my browser's got it cached and so on. I don't yep. need to worry yep. about it, right? But you can create an account. Uh, just click the create. And when you go to pivot.progress.com, you'll get to here and you can, um, the one, although it says use institutional login credentials, that assumes that we've got single sign-on set up, which I'm not sure we have for all the CUNY institutions. So you probably want to go to use email address, create password, fill in this form here. And uh, it's just name, email address, re-enter the password, tell us who, what, what institution you're associated with, you'll find your college listed here. Okay. And then say, then do the consent thing, uh, read the terms and conditions if you want, uh, and then say, I'm not a robot and you create my account and then you'll get an email ping that directs you to go back and just confirm who you are. And then you can just log into Pivot by going to, uh, I'm not sure whether that going to here, you get something like this. You'll have to populate okay. this, this bit. And then once you're logged in, you should have, um, well, let me, let me sign in real quick. Um, then when you logged in, I'm assuming I've got two affiliations. Don't worry about that. Then I think it's going to prompt you. There'll be a pop-up, I think, else that says, you haven't claimed your profile yet. Please go ahead and do so now. Got it. Right? Okay. And, that, and then gonna... just follow, follow the bouncing ball from there. I will so, do that. Thanks so much. Yeah. All right. You're very welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Anybody else want to jump in? John? Yeah. I just had a quick question about when I look at my profile, I don't see publications tab okay. anywhere to edit. Okay. Uh, that then um, you've got two options at that point, I think. Let me, I've kind of lost track of even where I am. So if I go to my uh -huh. profile, um, I don't have publications either because I'm not a researcher. Um, again, you've got a couple of options. That, oh, come on, pivot. Did I not hit it? <clears throat> if you go to your profile page, if you uh, go to edit, go to edit profile, again, it takes you off to a new tab, which loads right. along the top here. Um, and um, if there are no, if, if there is no, if there are no publications, you should have access to this Oh, I see. And you add right. them. You just here. add them there. And my, okay, my and point there. Tab. Yeah. And my point was this is where you can either batch upload from Google Scholar, for example, or, uh, or tell Pivot what you're looking for, what type of publication it was, uh, and start giving it a title. And if you're lucky, Pivot's going to find it on the fly uh, for you. Great. Right. And then populate great. everything else that's underneath this. Great. Uh, right. Yeah. If in, if you find trouble with if you're having trouble with the uh, with your profile, then go ahead and use the resource, use the help button. Uh, it's not in this page, but uh, use the use the help button up here and just contact our tech support team. Just describe it to them and say, "Hey, I need some help with my profile." They will probably forward it to the profiles team, and then they'll be in touch with you and work with you one on one directly Great. to get to Excellent. get your profile to get your profile Great. sorted out. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Hi, is there a way to batch upload from RefWorks? <laughs> You'd think there would be because it's the same company. Um, that's a very good question. Uh, can I uh, take that under advisement and okay. let, let John and Ingrid know and they can maybe forward it to you? Yeah, okay. who's, who's asking the question though? Uh, my name is Fermit Cass. I'm from I've got you there. I see, 
Yeah, I see you it's there. Like, Thank you. I have yeah. everything I've done in RefWorks, and it would be easier, you know, if we could take, go from RefWorks, even if we had to go from RefWorks into a particular format and then go into Pivot, would be um, really easy. Uh, yeah. For Matt, have you looked at Pivot? Have you looked at your profile in Pivot? Not yet. No. Okay. Do me a favor. Do that first, because I strongly suspect, although I don't work in Ref RefWorks at all, I got to imagine that we are doing our, our bit here and you know, it's the same company. Okay. For six. So if you if you get into pivot at your convenience, if you find that no, it's not there, then let us know if you then you know, just use the help button. Uh, okay. And, I'll and take then, a look. Uh, yeah, do Thank that. Thanks. So it's a good question though. Thank you. Yeah. I wonder if I could ask a question about privacy. Yeah. Um, and um, if there's a way that we have any privacy settings, and also about third party. Um, I'm sorry, my phone just. Uh, sorry, then. And, and that th third parties that might get to uh, use our, um, you know, by you know, professional biographical material, you right. know, business purposes. Yeah, so I don't have a ready-made statement on that one. What I do know is that anything that we've got at Pivot, we're not sharing with anybody outside of the company. Okay. Um, the profiles are... Public information. Public information, basically. Yeah. Yeah. The, and, uh, yeah. And, and and it's we're not uh, we're not paying anybody to get the information. Um, uh, the profiles can follow a person from one institution to another. You know, it's not. Uh, and actually, I will tell you too that is my understanding that because Pivot is a global a global database, we are beholden to. Is that the right word? Um, we have to comply with the tightest privacy regulations across the world mm -hmm. and in that case it's my understanding that we recently uh you know within the last few months moved the pivot cloud or the cloud where pivot lives uh into a different aka european environment mm -hmm. because their 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 gdpr rules are, are stronger than the the u.s ones that's good to know thank you so I think we're going to have to stop it there. Um, I think um, Robert is generous with his time. He's, he's gone 10 minutes over. <laughs> oh, I'm fine. Uh, yeah. At some point in the future, I, what I'm going to try to do is set up a one and a half hour webinar. Uh, probably won't be within the next few months. Uh, but mm -hmm. I, what we'll do is we'll try to set something up uh, because there appears to be a lot of interest at CUNY uh, on this, uh, judging yeah. from the participation today during today's webinar. So um, thanks everyone for attending. Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, and thank you very much, Robert, for doing such a great uh, uh, presentation. Every time uh, I come to one of these, I learn something new. Great stuff. Thanks, John. So, thanks again. Thank you everyone for your uh, you. participation and time. I know we're all busy. Uh, it's been a great way to spend my day an hour with you guys. So and thanks again. For, for men, send an email to me uh, if you have any additional questions. Uh, yeah. about what you were asking for, and then I can get it to Robert. We'll sure. get something back to you on that. Yeah. Great stuff. Uh, John, I'm going to, oh, if I log off, everybody's going to log off. So uh, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Bye-bye now. Bye now. Bye.